Hello my friends and welcome to episode 54 of The Wanderer. Today I'm bringing you a transfer special. I'm a little bit into the season. I've played the first uh, two games and the first Betfred Cup game because I wanted to bring you back for the Champions League. And basically the way it worked out was that meant that you missed that. Um, hope you understand that. Um, but we've got this transfer special coming in today. So the players that we're starting with is the release players. The players that didn't make it at the club. They've not earned a new contract, basically. So starting off, we have Aidan White, a player who we had when we came in. He's went down to Queen of the South in the Championship, so probably shows a correct decision. Liam Polworth got in Motherwell. They've just been recently promoted back up. Uh, worth two million, so maybe shows a bit of a questionable decision. But, you know, what it is... 4.8k a week, I'm not really going to pay 4.8k a week to a player who's not going to be anywhere near our first team in all honesty. Uh, Chris Hamilton's away, he's gone to Falkirk again in his championship. Wasn't developing anywhere near enough to be threatening the first team, he was getting to an age where I'm just like, right, we're just going to move him on. He's played one Betfred Cup game and one non-competitive game, so it shows that he's not going to be first team there either. Ethan Erhalon, sorry, not pronounced that right. He's not got a club. And Willie Murray also got to Falkirk. I um, feel like he could have been something, but, you know, he wasn't going to trouble the first team anytime soon. So, I'm going to go into staff now. We have made staff changes. So, Darren Taylor and Mustafa Knight both leaving. Uh, Darren Taylor was a director of football. The board told me that they wanted to keep him till the end of his contract. So, I kind of did that, I would, I'd got past the point where I wasn't allowed to sack him a long time ago but I thought I'll just let him see out his contract and Mustafa Knight was an under 20s coach I'm going to go into why I got rid of him in a minute, uh, so we brought in we were allowed extra scouts, extra under 20 coaches, an extra coach, I then asked to get another coach and then I decided to bring in a director of football the board recommended a dead and I thought well actually why not let's have one, Darren Taylor finalised and the deals made things a lot easier for me just took a clicking off an extra button basically. So we brought in Mick Taylor from Fleetwood as a scout. Uh, he's fairly decent. Uh, there was a couple of better options but wage wise we couldn't afford him. We brought Paul Watton in from Plymouth. He's been caretaker manager, he was a player, player coach, coach there for a very, very long time. Very, very good coach indeed. Uh, he comes in, we bring in Nemeh from Slovan Bratislava as an under 20s coach and he is a very 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 good under 20s coach indeed very very happy and this was the level of coach we were getting which is why Miss Staff Knight was then fired we brought in Lee Sharp who was a coach at Aloha he's not quite as good but he offers certain areas if you like that we weren't covering so he comes in previous under 20s manager and then at Clyde and then been coach at Aloha for a few years and I just he was interested in coming and I made an offer and he came in that was when I then went to the board and said, can I actually get another coach for the first team? Uh, I was having a look at our training and our uh, coaches and I felt a fitness coach was the ideal and then I had a look and I went, actually, goalkeeping distribution is a weak point for us. So I brought in Edward Tusninski. Goalkeeper distribution is actually one of his weaker stats. There was some two very, very good options, but they wanted double the ways that I was allowed to offer. This guy was willing to accept very, very little. He comes from Shakhtar Sorgonsk. Again, butchered that name as well. I do apologise. Uh, but he's been for a number of years as well. Previous goalkeeping coaches' jobs, including clubs like uh, Dynamo Minsk, uh, where he actually played as well. Only club that I really recognise. Kuban, I recognise for some reason as well. I suspect they might have beat Barcelona in the Champions League at some point. Don't want to click on it because I don't want to give away our league position uh, for our next episode. We brought in. Matthew blocks him. He's the one who replaced Mustafa Knight. And again, very, very good youth coach. Made a big stride there. And then Mikhail Budovic comes in from Prod Bezova as our director of football. He's maybe not quite as good as what um, Darren Taylor was. Darren Taylor was 11 12. He is 11 12. Uh, he's got a good level of discipline, low determination, which is never great. But he does play his favourite uh, formation match that of mine uh, so that's why he's came in doesn't show you on the screen for some reason i'm not really sure why it should be showing us down here does it show us for any of them yeah it does uh, so it's just not showing me for him uh, does it show me with darren taylor as well no it doesn't either way he's came in 
uh, got to be very very good on quite a low wage as well, seven hundred pound per week. Uh, so let's get in to the transfer deals. So we're going to start with the outs. There's a lot, and believe me, there's a lot. So Alan Manis, Robbie McAllister, Stuart Baird, Rura McDonald, Darren Cowie, Billy Hughes, Jim Wright, Ryan McKee, David Foster, Forster, uh, Callum Morrison, this guy who's now I'm not going to try and pronounce, Danny Finlayson and Dean Ritchie, Eric Wallace and Andy Irvin, all out on loan. They're all in the Championship or the SPL. Forfer is a club that you won't notice there. Uh, or one of our previous clubs, of course. They finally got promoted through the playoffs. They've hit the playoffs every single season and bricked it. They finally got through one. So their guys are there as well. Harry Suter's gone to Hamilton for 250000 Um To be honest, I was just looking to get him off the wage budget. I was hoping to get a little bit more. We're paying a tiny bit of his wages, if I remember correct. Um, no, we're not. Um, there was an offer that I rejected that was going to be paying some of his wages. Is it Roshan Williams who were maybe paying some wages too? Yeah, there we go. So £325 a week there uh, for Roshan Williams. Sold him for 195 k He's played, went and played two full, four competitive, five competitive games for Aberdeen. It's now worth £1 million. Uh, he wasn't developing the way I hoped. I did see him as a project player, and I will be honest, I felt like that project wasn't completed. But his tackling was not improving, his marking wasn't improving, his heading wasn't improving. The physicals and the mental, well the mentals were okay, the physicals were monstrous, but I just thought, you know what, let's get him off the wage budget rather than struggling about. Brandon Mason went to Burr, and this caused some issues in the team. Um, Brandon Mason was a very, very good player for us last season. Um, if I remember correctly, played 38 games with a 7.01 rating, and 13 with a 7.09 the season before, but I felt like he wasn't doing enough. I felt like he missed a lot of tackles, felt like we could do better, so I sold him on. A couple of team members weren't happy about that, but I left it at that and stuck with my guns. Uh, Ewan Henderson is away to Sunderland uh, for 170k, and I think it's a 30% sell on fee of the next deal or 35. It's something pretty insane. Um, I was initially I was going to sell him anyway because I wasn't sure on how his development was going. I didn't see him trouble in the first team. We have other players that have came in that I will go through. Uh, as you see, scout recommendation is 44, almost in his last resort. In fact, his potential ability is now gone, so I've sold him right at the right time. And I thought, do you know what, if he goes to England and I get a big sell-on fee in there, even if he doesn't develop that well, gets maybe gets a few games, had a move, we print some extra money. So I thought that's worthwhile doing. Sunderland were interested, just as about to go and transfer list them and offer them out. And I just went, do you know what, I'll just target Sunderland. I'll not put him on the transfer list and I'll see what he can do. We actually got more than what his value is worth by doing that. First big sale, Lewis Moult. Uh, you'll know from last episode, I got offered the Rangers job and I knew I was never going to take it at this stage in the series. I do want to go back to Rangers, but I feel like the way this series started was because the Rangers series failed. And I feel like ending this series with Rangers would have been the best thing. I want to go abroad again before we go to Rangers, so that's why I turned it down. I will have explained that in the last episode, but I couldn't record a video at that point. I've not had a chance to edit it yet, so I will make a point of mentioning that, but I'm not I'm mentioning it in this episode. Um, but anyway, Lou Mo went to Rangers for £6 million, rising to 6.25 based on appearances and goals. Valued at 7.75 at Ibrox, 54 uh, scout rating, 3 star potential, um, or overall rather, decent sort of sale there. Um, Inaki Pena went back to Lugo in Spain, again can I click that without showing you my table, I can. They're in the second division, uh, they are indeed called Lugo, it's not a... Thing. I think they were the team that had that beer kit a couple of years ago and the tuxedo kit. Um, he's went back for 32k, so we've made a small profit on him and we've got a sell-on clause in there. Greg Hill early on loan as well, we've got a fee for him, uh, 23.5k or 29.5 if he doesn't play. And then we've got our big sale, is Cameron Burgess going to Gijon uh, for 8 million. And I think there's a sell-on clause in here. Um, I'm not actually sure who they're meant to be in real life. Could be that they're called Sporting Gijon. Um, either way, he's away there for £8 million. I've seen there was an interest in him, and he was worth about £6 million. And 
I'd brought in players, I'd brought in one player already, and there was another few that I was looking at. I was like, do you know what? I can get them for a lot less and sell Burgess on for more while the stock's high and they were sort of an equal or better ability or some cases younger on similar ability with potential to be a lot lot better so I thought you know what that's good business and Carboro Hunchaba is another player that's went on loan he's gone to Midland eh, on a long fee of 10k a month I just want him to get games to be honest and he's went there already he's got three starts in the league one off the, another one off the bench and two in the Europa League so that's good business if he can go there and develop a little bit I'll be very very happy because I do still see something in him uh, on the end we'll start with the free transfer so we brought James Tavernier in from Rangers two and a half star potential maybe doesn't look great his tackling's a bit of an issue his physicals have gone down a little bit you know there's a few issues particularly defensively but going forward he's the kind of fullback that I like um, he's going to just rival to vesting of maybe paying a bit more in wages than what I should have if I'd wait till the end of the season to grab him Jack Henry is the steal of the window 4.7 million pound value uh, 4.5k a week very very good defender mentals leave a bit to be desired which is a bit of an issue when I want to play central defenders but we'll work that out physically not as physical as Roshan Williams it's still a very physical defender good in the air um, so that all works out quite nice for us and then we've got Zach Rudden in on a free as well still got a bit of potential about him he's on a low wage of 1.1k a week and I knew from last season we needed a third striker at this point I hadn't really looked at strikers so I just went oh it's free I brought him in on trial offered him a contract and brought him in basically as a third choice striker that's could hopefully develop can play inside forward on the left wing as well and a shadow striker in the attacking midfield role maybe not quite so suited to that he does have a few oranges there uh, we brought in Firim Orenk just after that this was when about the time that I was selling Molt if I remember correctly as you see Molt going on the 30th and this guy basically came up my scout said you know when the scouts come to you and say I've got a contact in this country he's recommended this player this is how I got this guy and I looked at him after this recommendation I was like he's good 18 years old 17 finishing 12 composure needs a bit of work 17 acceleration 14 off the ball passing needs quite a lot of work if he's going to make it but everything else is really really good he is going to be rivaling Z Gomez for £600,000 rising to 300 I can't remember what all those rises are um, for very very little and I was like do you know what that could be a deal that is very very worth doing He's Turkish, had no issues getting him a work permit, smashing. And then that reminds me, and I'm going to do a tutorial on how I find some of these deals because some of them, some of them are just through scouts, but it did remind me, uh, some of them, uh, particularly the last two or three, came from a certain way that I search transfers every window. So next up is Ibram, Ivan Abramovich. A Belarusian midfielder. He's not had a chance to get a game yet because he got injured, unfortunately, during sort of the end of preseason. Very, very good player. Going to be rivaling um, Jamie Baronis for that deep line playmaker role. Needs to work on a couple of things, but again, 20 year old. He's got potential for the price I paid, which was 275k. Don't think you can really go wrong there. He's got a three year deal. Wage is a bit more expensive than what I wanted for sort of a rotation player, but that's fine. And then next up, 120k for this guy. He's played two games of a 6.9. What a player he was, by the way. He's a defensive midfielder by trade, but as a deep line playmaker, um, that's undefined. On support, you know, maybe not quite as good, but deep line playmaker as well, he can do that. Def defensive midfielder you can do that so I have so many options with this kid and again 19 years old five star potential 2.6k resolute personality for 120k smashing deal Markel is just a left back that I brought in who happened to be a free agent he's previously played six games with Derby last season after being at Leon and having a number of games at Leon um, the strange thing about this is, and I suspect there's a bug with work permits, obviously by this point I'd brought my director of football in, 
Markal had his work permit declined and then my director of football said to him and I was like that's strange he's 33 I'm not going to loan him out and try and get my work permit when he's 33 that's a bit different from a 22 year old goalkeeper like what I did with Penna um, and I went into the first team to be like right well I'm going to loan him out and just try and get his wages off the books the work permit symbol wasn't there he doesn't have a work permit but he's allowed to play um, given that I'm paying him 3.5k a week and I would have cancelled the deal if I had been in charge uh, I'm going to play him um, because there's nobody else really I hope you guys understand that that's going to come up again I can't remember who it was for but it will come up again further down this list next up is Hans Nicolucci Caviglia who comes from Juventus for 600k already worth 2.8 million going to be a very very strong competitor hopefully for Ryan Hedges this year very natural in this position he's going to develop into it already every stat is green or blue which is the way I set up my colours mentally he has a lot of issues and I can't tutor him because there's nobody that's high enough up to tutor him basically um, so hopefully we can get him tutored at some point and help out with that we've brought Ian Robson in, Robinson rather, in on loan from Swansea he was just paying 4k a week wages sort of a decent backup option but at this point I wasn't sure I was going to get another defender in and I was just looking for a backup in all honesty I don't think we've actually mentioned the defender yet so that maybe highlights that I'd sold two defenders expecting a couple to come in and it didn't happen we brought in Callum Smith on loan uh, from Bournemouth he's worth 13 million inside forward defensive forward target man can play a lot of different forward type of roles as you can see stat wise he's accommodated for a lot of them uh, with the work rate to boot uh, resolute personality unfortunately he's been injured so he's not been able to actually get any game time but he's worthwhile uh, Jordan Jones went out and loaned to Aberdeen as a result of that deal then this deal here Ross McShane from St Johnston 2.6 million rising to 4.8 million he's already loaned back to St Johnston so I'm going to show you again this was just one that he must have been on my shortlist from when I've scouted under 18s or under 19s, eh, under 19s or under 21 Scotland international team. And it came up, Lesser put in a bid for this guy and I went, oh, must be half decent then. It was decent money. And I had a look at him and I went, oh, he's actually quite good. Um, so I've loaned him straight back to St Johnston. He's played, you know, a decent amount of games there for them since that loan back. Uh, 16 finishing, 11 composure decent physicals, has a couple of things that he needs to work on, uh, I play with an advanced forward of course, so it needs to work on work rate and passing in particular but professional hopefully we can get him going 16 flair as well, which is always really good for the Champions League, then we bring in Mikhail Stulek for Nitra, I think he was the other one that filled his work permit, doesn't matter quite so much in his case because the deal involved loaning him back to Nitra um, this was a active relegation release clause 20 year old um, what potential have you got 14 and a half star so not the greatest potential in the world but do you know what I was like as long as he develops into a backup then I'm going to be really really happy because 96k for a backup is great and Peter Pateb who comes in as a first choice defender rivaling with Jack Henry and John Souter free star ability already well valued at 1 million we've paid 1.6 for him but you know all round very very good but a lot better mentally than Jack Henry not quite as good physically similar in the tackle position marking and heading uh, but he is quality 16 flair for a centre back made me giggle a little bit by the way as well uh, could probably be retrained in certain midfield roles if we could increase his passing uh, but he's 20 year old with 4 star potential has shoots with power as well uh, despite 6 long shots and 7 finishing which doesn't really impress me much. Um, so that rounds up all our transfer ins and outs. We've brought in £15 million. Uh, that's minus 1.5, I think, that was on Burgess deal with Scunthorpe. Uh, they had 20% of the profit, unfortunately, and he signed for very, very little. Um, everyone else was pretty good, to be honest. Um, and... Rangers was a full deal, so 50 million brought in, 6 million spent. But I think we've spent 6 million on players that are going to be worth a lot more than 6 million in the future. You know, it's a young bring in this year, 
few experienced heads in there, but everyone's fairly young. Anyway, guys, I've never really done a transfer episode, special episode before, but looking at that, this has been 20 minutes long. I think it's been a good decision to do that. Um, let me know if you want to see a tutorial about how I find some of these deals that I bring in, because I know some of them are quite cheap, and I'd like you to know how to do that. So if you want to see a tutorial, let me know. I'm currently on holiday uh, when this video is live, but I will see it when I get back, and I will try and get that done. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching this episode. We'll be back in the next episode with the Champions League playoff um, games. I'm going to bring in you both legs. It's going to be against Copenhagen. I'll hope to catch you then. Mm -hmm.